Skills. Uh, the topic of, of this paper is uh, Youth Entrepreneurship Broadly in Africa, then with focus on, on Swaziland. And it's quartered with Tuli Kube and Thierry Kanguye from African Development Bank. So f first outline of the, of the presentation. Uh, we will first outline some facts about youth unemployment in Africa, especially Southern Africa, some obstacles to entrepreneurship that are based on the World Bank Enterprise Surveys, then analytical framework that we use. Then we compare with the data we have from Swaziland. Uh, it's a fairly new survey collected last year. And finally, with some experiences in, uh, uh, in intervention in other countries in Africa and elsewhere. So uh, this is actually from African Economic Outlook 2012, and it shows unemployment rates for adults and, uh, and for youth. What stands out that in particular in Southern Africa, you know, uh, the, the youth unemployment is very high. Uh, very good paper is on, on features of African labor markets and youth is John Page 2012 that he portrays the different types. So Southern Africa are middle-income countries where the challenge is really in unemployment, less so of uh, informal sector employment or, or working poverty. And here, here just shows specifically for Swaziland that, uh, you know, even within such a small country as the picture on the right, we can have major regional differences. Nevertheless, the rates are high everywhere. And also the, the potential use dividend or use in time bomb, whichever the things that will go, showing us the demographic trends and, and in particular how, you know, young population is, is prominent in the Swazi labor force. So then uh, what are some of the constraints uh, to entrepreneurship in Sub-Saharan Africa? Um, especially after the global financial crisis, uh, Entrepreneurship became again popular policy topic with a view that, that basically people can help out of the, help out themselves in challenging economic situation and it could contribute, it would not be the main driver, but it could be a contributor to, to inclusive growth. So then if that's the case, if we believe this is a reasonable possibility, what are some of the impediments and how can they be overcome? So then we look at the World Bank Enterprise Survey and they find, of course, constraint on both firms and workers. And, um, and these change over time. So actually this next graph sh shows it quite well. So at the early stages of development, here we have the GDP per capita log. We, we see that infrastructure and access to finance matter. But with time, other constraints become more important, such as skill or labor regulations. Uh, and here just again from uh, mostly, mostly from World Bank databases like governance or entrepreneurship database, we see some of the constraints such as regulation, cost of startup of business, and education which then impacts technology adoption and innovation. So then, then we just construct a very simple one period model. It's a model of structural transformation. So we are looking at economy that is changing and, and what would in such situation could be maybe policies to, to help uh, facilitate such transformation. So we have two types of, of uh, agents. We have workers and entrepreneurs. Uh, and then a uh, portion of them are young and a portion of them are adult. Then uh, entrepreneurs spend their time searching for business opportunity. Basically it's a search model with, with friction and the friction is the search for business opportunity which comes at a cost, gamma being the parameter of, of efficiency of search. If they succeed and open a business, then they produce output uh, according to standard Cobb Douglas production function below. Um, and uh, entre entrepreneurs who do not succeed though finding business opportunity in this, in this productive uh, sector, we will not say whether formal or informal, they will be in subsistence sector, we call it here informal sector, and, and earn income B. Uh, then uh, workers also uh, are, are, for them it's also a costly undertaking to work in, the, in this productive sector. They need to acquire some skills, again comes at a cost. Uh, then we have the 
very standard maximization solution or optimization solution. And sorry, here here is uh, some some outcome of that, and basically it comes to that. Uh, uh, Worker search to the point, uh, I mean, entrepreneur search to the point that the marginal cost of search equals the expected profit, and, and workers train to the point that the marginal cost of training equals uh, the, the expected wage. Then we compare it with, with wage solution. We find these conditions to be very similar with, with one condition that the B the B, uh, the factor in the informal sector is one of the distortion that basically discourages entrepreneurs to search for business opportunities. So here we show the outcome. Then we ask how can policies help and then, then we derive what would be optimal subsidies where if we were to derive the optimal solution. Nevertheless, what we see that even with the so-called optimal solution, we would have the, the inequalities would not change. So then we ask basically, what type of government intervention would, would be needed in a society that values equity and, and wants equal outcomes? Um, and uh, these are some of, the, some of the findings. Now, if we want to be a little bit more formal about it and derive it from some kind of optimization, because that was not coming uh, as a result under standard solution, we need a society that derives this utility from unemployment, which is not so unreasonable, or this utility from youth unemployment, again, not unreasonable, especially after Arab Spring. So once we do that, we will find what the optimal subsidies, etc., be from that point of view. So basically, the, the findings of this is that, you know, support to, to start up capital and also support to training for entrepreneurs is something that the governments may like to consider. Then we want to see what, first of all, is, is the data from Swaziland telling us, and then what are some of the experiences, uh, some of the experiences from other countries. So this was just actually, it was also meant to be at the beginning. This is showing uh, uh, that the private sector in Swaziland is very underdeveloped. Maybe I should give a little bit more background. Yes, Africa is growing, Africa is rising, but Swaziland is not part of that, that you know, takeoff. It is one of the least growing countries in Africa for almost two decades. And it's uh, probably, it's reasonable to say it's caught in a middle income trap. And majority population uh, lives below the equivalent of, it lives in poverty. And then, of course, part it has to do with business environment, but not only. So then we, we this, is, this is from the survey of entrepreneurs that was undertaken about a year, year ago in Swaziland. And we indeed, what we want to document here is that young entrepreneurs have basically less experience and, and fewer skills, so are disadvantaged that way relative to adults. And we can see it from tertiary education, whether they previously owned business, whether they were employed with some relevant experience, and, and et cetera, is that their first business. And then we also looked at the outcomes, and indeed we found that young, across several indicators, young uh, entrepreneurs do not perform as well as the adults when it comes to sales. Um, they are not operating f at full capacity as much as the adults, although their firms are smaller. And here just uh, another example, the, the estimate of sales shows the differences between young entrepreneurs and adults. Then uh, finally, so we would still say, okay, would it be reasonable to, to discuss some of the policies and what are the findings as elsewhere? And probably one should say, you know, findings, that the actual experience is mixed with these types of programs, so one should be careful. And uh, nevertheless, uh, one wants to look at some of the Experiences. So in Europe, the OECD 2012 study of youth entrepreneurship has looked into high potential entrepreneurs, so a specific group, not everybody. So then they, they find that the interventions are more effective, uh, you know, if, if then indeed the high potential youth is well, well selected, so the, the careful selection of the project. Um, also, more, more support for one, per entrepreneur rather than spreading uh, resources thinly. That's, by the way, what we found also in Swaziland. Swaziland made some attempts to support young entrepreneurs, 
but at the end the support per entrepreneur was very low, that was the complaint. We also supplemented the quantitative survey with focus group discussions, so th that, that was what we were getting from the focus group discussions. And then also, it's usually more than just one thing, it's several measures together, so for example, startup cost and, and skill development, and, and good news is that we see that being, being now implemented in Swaziland in uh, various uh, forms, usually when, when young entrepreneurs ask for credit, it is conditional on obtaining training. Uh, then there was also um, experience with uh, disadvantaged youth, so that's something else than, uh, you know, high potential use, and uh, there, uh, the experience is, yes, if subsidies are provided, there needs to be credible exit, so uh, otherwise this could go on forever, and then and, and that's, of course, not the idea. And uh, also the training schemes should be, and we heard that in Swaziland as well, but this is from international experience, that uh, they should be administrated by private sector that better understands the needs rather than, than the government, even though the government has a role to play in, uh, in facilitating that. Okay. Thank you.